I thought our topic today would be the most head scratching ADPs on underdog, the most puzzling. Again, it is a different game, so we'll kind of explain why these uh, these ADPs are the way they are, but also uh, give our thoughts on on maybe why they're they're a little off, even with the uh, scoring settings and, and roster settings here. My number one is Paul Goldschmidt, and look, I love Goldie. He won the MVP last year, but his ADP on underdog is sixteen point seven. Ahead of guys like Manny Machado, Austin Riley, and while I love Goldie, it feels like that's at uh, seventeen point six. That feels like chasing a little bit to me. So I, I don't like Goldie at, at seventeen point six. That one uh, higher than his normal ADP, and you know when he gets lumped in with guys like Machado and Riley in the corner uh, or in the infield on underdog, it just doesn't make sense for me to be uh, taking him over those guys. Who's your first most head scratching ADP on underdog? I'm going to go with somebody who I think is being underdrafted in the league, and it's Bobby Witt Jr. And I do understand that because of different roles that he's maybe more valuable in a standard five by five league. But I'm a big believer in Witt's talent, and I'm looking. The last time I looked, his underdog draft precision was 32.2. That's way too low. I there. I, I'm taking Bobby Witt over. Paul Goldschmidt in any type of best ball format or any type mm. of format. I am such a big believer in his talent. I think he's going to be a guy who hits much more for much more power. I think he's going to steal a ton of bases. You know, there is the risk of getting caught there as well, but I am a big believer in Bobby Witt. And by the way, I totally agree with you on Paul Goldschmidt. That is far too high. And I love the player, but that is mm. more of a second round talent than a guy that I think should be, going that high but yeah i'm all in on bobby wood jr that's interesting because usually with underdog and other points formats I've, i'm out on the speedsters but okay um wit may have enough in that bat to to kind of you know compensate because with a lot of times even though you get points for steals and in, in my experience those points aren't enough to make up the difference of just the pure hitting ability in large Fair. part but of course bobby wood can can swing it like a stud too uh, right my, and that's yeah. oh i'm sorry oh, no, that's, go ahead. i just wanted to say that's why i'm like in nfbc leagues he's often going as a a first round player that's why he i certainly wouldn't have him that high but 32 like over uh some of these other guys it just it doesn't add up for me i i really would be targeting him in that 15 to 20 range if i was playing in best ball sorry to interrupt not at all. Uh, next up for me, a couple outfielders. Now, if you've played on underdog, you know there's a mad dash for outfielders because they dry up so quickly. And when you have all the infielders lumped together, you know, you can find some pretty good infielders late, but that's not so much the case for uh, for outfielders. But even so, I think 31.7 ADP on Cedric Mullins is too high. Just yeah. That feels like getting caught up in the mad rush for outfielders too much and uh, not really seeing seeing the field clearly, so that one feels like uh, just getting caught up in the in the outfielder madness too much. So uh, I'll pass on him and Corbin Carroll too. I love love him in Roto, but at forty three point two, yeah, another one where I feel like you're you're chasing the outfield a little too much. And I get that you have to fill those spots, but I think you can comp compile your team better by either drafting some outfielders earlier and not getting caught with Corbin at 43 or, you know, attacking the uh, middle tier a little better. I, I just think Corbin Carroll should fall closer to that middle tier than, than the top tier. Yeah. It's weird to see that he's only 11 spots below Bobby Witt Jr. By the way, mm -hmm. <laughs> again, I hate to keep hammering that home. I am a big believer in Bobby Witt Jr. Uh, a pitcher that I think is going too low is Zach Wheeler uh, average draft spot of 57. I love Wheeler. I think the Phillies are going to be, yeah, I do know the Bryce Harper injury is going to hurt them, but I do think that that team is loaded. And the, the NL East is a tough division for all the reasons that we talked about earlier, but Wheeler has swing and miss stuff. He has a quality defense actually finally behind him. I think it's not great. Uh, sorry, Keith Hernandez. It's still not great, but it is better. And I just think that this is a guy who's going below Arms like Framber Valdez and Christian Javier, that's too much chasing the win for me. I would have him closer into that top 10 spot for starting pitchers on underdog, and he's not going in that range. And I think take advantage of that because if he is falling outside of that range, 
he could be a massive steal for best ball leagues. I like that one. I considered Wheeler for my list as well, but didn't quite yes. make the cut, but I'm glad he made the made the show in this segment uh, yes. one way or another. I got Zach Gallon, and you mentioned Gallon earlier in the show. ADP on underdog 74. Feels like people just you know rushing for outfielders, rushing to fill some infield spots as the, as the infielders fall as a result of the outfielders getting pushed up. And then Gallon falls in this kind of dead zone at 74 where – I mean, it just seems like a screaming value to me. So I love grabbing Gallon. If you could pop him maybe six to eight picks earlier than this, I, I would love to get him on pretty much every team if I can, as long as this ADP holds up at 74. Yeah, I like that call. And one of the arms that's going ahead of him that I definitely think is being overdrafted, at least in underdog, Robbie Ray. And I hate to say that as a Seattle Mariner fan, 65.4 and going ahead of arms like Freed and Gallon and Tristan McKenzie and Hunter Green. I can't do that. And I do think Seattle will give him some win chances. I have some concerns about whether or not he's going to be the command guy. The, the 2021 version of Robbie Ray is not happening again. He was good in 2022, and I think he will have win chances for, sure hoping for my grandma, a ton of win chances for the Seattle Mariners. But ahead of guys like Julio Urias, Max Freed, Zach Gallen, that just doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah, that's a good one. He's, you know, it was funny. He had that great 2021. I expected so much regression with the control. Yeah. The walk, the walk rate held pretty steady with the home run sure. still an issue. But yes, if he gives a little bit back on the, the walk side and then you had the homers, it could get uh, kind of ugly for him. One good guy call. I'm fading at ADP on underdog. Logan Webb at 100.1, just a bad team, I think. I look at that team, and it's pretty nasty, honestly. And, um, you know, I want want that upside. I like Logan Webb's skills, but at 100.1, I just feel like I, I'd rather have a guy with more upside. I guess that's not, like, super early, but I, I'm kind of worried about that team and, and the blow-up potential of the Giants this year. It, it, the win chances could be lacking. I do think that the Giants, this is such a great year for the balance schedule that they're not going to have to play the Padres and the Dodgers as mm. often as they normally would. I think that could help him, but I don't see a ton of upside there. Certainly somebody I like more in a, a five by five than somebody who's going to be like winning me leagues in a best ball format. Uh, this one hurts me a little bit. Uh, Brian Reynolds is going too high. Mm -hmm. It's it's as somebody who I really like, and I hate saying it because I beat this drum for a very long time as a prospect guy that uh, he was well under drafted out of Vanderbilt. But as the twentieth outfielder off the board, and a twentieth outfielder off the board and underdog just doesn't make a whole heck of a lot of sense for me. I would rather be targeting guys like. You know, Anthony Santander is a, a guy who I thought was going to be underdrafted. I, I want as much as I can have of that guy right now, just based on the fact that he has been absolutely crushing the ball and has excellent metrics. You know, Giancarlo Stanton, Stephen Kwan, these are all guys that I'm probably taking over Reynolds because the Pirates stink. If he's traded, I will go ahead and say this was a terrible take. But a guy who's going 35th overall, just a couple spots again, below <laughs> Bobby Witt Jr., mm. I think that's just too high. I'm with you. I've I've come to the point where I haven't had an outfielder yet and I've considered him. And I just thought, no, I can't do that. And I, I can't square that, <laughs> sure. you know, that need for an outfielder with the skills at that range. Uh, my last few here, Tommy Edmond, ADP 112.4. Just need more upside. And plus he gets, again, lumped in with – with infield, you only need three, and I just don't think he's going to clear the bar to make it into your starting lineup more than, I don't know, six to eight weeks of the season. Then Drew right. Rasmussen. Drew Rasmussen, ADP 173, way too low. Go, go, go get you some Drew Rasmussen in your life, folks. Yeah. Yeah, Drew Rasmussen's a great call. In our over the weekends, we've been doing these category previews, and we've had Rasmussen as a sleeper for ERA and WHIP. All about that guy for sure. Um, just closing out for me real mm. quick, uh, a couple of pitchers that I am really reticent about drafting high. Logan Gilbert, again, I hate doing another Seattle Mariner, but gave up so much hard contact last year and the limited shift 
could he be a guy who takes that next step forward in his second full professional season? I do think so. But there is a lot of risk that comes with that reward. And then Kyle Wright, shoulders, man. <laughs> I know he's yeah. looked really good at the at towards the end of the season. But Kyle Wright is somebody that if you're doing a tiebreaker type thing, you should be really looking at that shoulder thing. Because even though he's saying all the right things and they're talking about him being just fine, take it with a lot of salt because there is an awful lot of risk that comes with shoulder injuries. 